morning students today i am going to enrich you about the nature human geography nature and scope now what is human geography as such we are discussing here now when we talk about human geography it relates to the relationship of human beings with the surface of the earth it relates to different aspects of human beings their social physical economic life of the people who are inhabiting the earth surface now before discussing this that scope of human geography let's come back to the basics of the points which are going to discuss right now we are going to discuss the definition of human geography now human geography definition have been uh, given by many geographers such as frederick wetzel ellen churchill semple and paul widen de laplas now according to ellen churchill semple the human geography is the study of a relationship between unstable earth and the unresting man it's basically a relationship between unresting man and unstable earth means the dynamism is the process or the key word in the human geography which is uh, because geography as a discipline is a dynamic phenomena it keeps on changing and we need to study from that perspective that geography as a discipline is dynamic in nature now apart from it the wetzel who has given the definition of of human geography as human societies and the earth surface it's basically the relationship of human societies different types of societies which are living on the surface of the earth and its all surface and uh, the society which they are inhabiting that means the synthesis is the key word in the human geography and the last it's about that uh, paul widen de laplace who talks about the physical law governing the earth surface means there are certain physical law which governs the earth surface and how the human beings cope up with that that is the relationship between the physical law governing the earth and the relationship with the human kind so these are the three definitions which has given by the different geographers in human geography but when we want to understand human geography in totality it talks about that human geography is the study of relationship between the man and the surface of the earth different activities associated with that now as we proceed further we talk about geography as a discipline there is a dualism in geography we talk about the difference of opinion among different geographers now there are two approaches which geography is being studied is geography is law making or nomothetic in its approach or ideographic means it is descriptive but the conclusion is that that we need to have a blend of both the things we also need to theorize geography and we also need to describe the different features of the earth because earth is a dynamic phenomena which keeps on changing and we cannot be keep the study of geography in one compartment and static in nature we have to study in totality and always we proceed with the dynamic process of the surface of the earth so that is the approach is which dualism is always there we need to take a balanced approach apart from it we talk about geography is either systematic or regional now we often talk about the geography should be studied in a systematic way like for climate physical features economic features but not like that also we also have to study geography as a region we select certain regions of the earth we study the earth in totality and that stop about that what is the region all about what is the location of that region what is the climate features what is the economic features what is the industry there what are the economic activities of the human kind so there are four approaches to human geography which is always in the refining process we talk about ideographic like descriptive we talk about nomothetic that is law making we also talk about the systematic approach should be there in human geography and also talk about regional approach to human geography but conclusion the we conclude that we need to study from all its perspective it's not that we stick to one nature of geography geography can be theorized geography can be descriptive geography also can be in a regional process that we take a regional planning approach to geography now apart from it we need to concentrate on the approaches to human geography that how human geography has evolved now when we talk about evolution of human geography we talk about first concept is that naturalization of humans and humanization of nature what is naturalization of humans the human beings 
have to acclimatize themselves according to the nature. Unless until the human being acclimatize, how can the human beings live in the different harsh climatic conditions? They have acclimatized their lifestyle, their economic activities, their agricultural practices, all according to the wishes of the nature. If we go against the nature, the human activities cannot sustain or survive for a longer period of time. That's why the harsh climatic condition regions, the human settlement is very less or less sparsely populated regions of the world like Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere where the harsh climatic conditions are there. So, we talk about humanization of nature, the, the human beings have adjusted according to the dictates of the nature. Apart from it, we also talk about approaches to humanization of nature. The human beings, as the time progress or develop or as the time pass, passing by, the human beings have through the technology and through the process of evolution have made transformation on the surface of the earth and to, for the well-being of themselves and that's why we talk about humanization of nature and this is only possible it has been taken place because of the technological advancement which has taken place innovations and discoveries in the field of different fields science uh, agriculture advancement and the human beings have also tried to modify their climatic conditions and make themselves conducive to live in. This is the concept of humanization of nature and naturalization of human. Now, the human geographers have talked about the concept have emanated from that is environmentalism. Now, what is environmentalism? Environmentalism is a concept where the human beings are adjusting themselves according to the environmental conditions and wherever we go, we have seen that the human beings acclimatize or adjust according to the environment. But there is other approach to that, that is called possibilism. Possibilism says that human beings, according to their discoveries, innovations, technology, they have made the things possible. Like they have constructed many bridges, many human activities are taking place. They have conquered the nature, they have inhabited themselves in the isolated pockets of even Antarctic region also. They have also placed themselves in the deep forested area. So, it's a human being capability have made the things possible. So, there are two concepts in human geography which is vital for us to understand that there is environmentalism and possibilism. But, the geographer says, no, if neither the environment is dominant nor the human beings are dominant. We have to take a middle path. And what is middle path? Let's talk about Sir Griffith Taylor, an English geographer, a geography from, geography from England, have said, no, we have to follow the concept of middle path, that is called neo-determinism. Now, what is neo-determinism? Neo-determinism talks about that neither the environment is dominant, nor the human beings are dominant. We have to take a middle path for the human beings and the earth to sustain for a longer period of time. Sustenance is the key word. If the human kind is to survive, we have to respect the mother earth, the nature, environment and that is only possible if we take the balanced approach in development and also we take care of the environment. So this concept talks about the new determinism that is stop and go determinism. Means we have to stop, think and then react to the environmental situations and that is called the middle path of human geography. Now apart from it, the human geography has a wider scope. We have to see that human geography studies the different aspects of the humankind. We also we study the aspects of human geography like industrial, industries. We also study from different perspectives like social geography. We also study human geography. We also study medical geography. We also study economic geography, political geography. So there are different domains of human geography which we have structured and made us into bifurcated into that discipline. When we talk about political geography, we talk about geopolitics of the world, we talk about the relations of different countries of the world in terms of different regions, when we talk about economic geography, we talk about industries, we talk about agriculture, we talk about development of different infrastructure development in a region. Here the key word is that geographers study from the perspective of a region and also they study from the perspective of what are the things which human beings inhabit or inherit and that we take care and how we can adjust with the things and make the development process an ongoing process because human beings 
are basically have an insatiable desire to develop the things and to make the things development but not at the cost of environment. So that's why it is saying. Now apart from it, we also need to take care about uh, the scope of nature and the, the uh, three geography approaches to human geography. The three approaches to human geography is the welfare approach, radical approach and then humanistic approach to human geography, behavioral approach to human geography. When we talk about the humanistic and the welfare approach to human geography, it talks about that the social well-being of the people has to be taken as a top priority for any development to take place. So, well-being has to be given the top priority and this well-being should not be at the cost of environment. Now, radical approach to human geography which talks about Marxian theory that poverty and deprivation is the key factor in uh, association with the environment and so poverty and deprivation is the key word for the human geography to study. Apart from it, there is also called, this is called the behavioral approach to human geography where the we must understand geography from the perspective of lived experience. Wherever we settle down, wherever the people settle down, we have to ensure that what is the experience the people are having and uh, on the basis of that we analyze and we take out, extrapolate the things according to the lived experience of the people in certain regions. So we have to take the different approaches to human geography. Now, how I will talk about definition, we talk about approaches, we talk about dualism. Now we talk about a different fields of evolution of human geography from different phases. Now geography as a discipline have evolved into different phases. Early phases it was descriptive approach. Then we talked about aerial differentiation. Now what is aerial differentiation? This concept was given by Alexander Hartstone which talks about that any area we need to study the area uniqueness of any area if there is a uniqueness in any area. And that uniqueness makes the region different from other region in all its perspective. We talk about geography as it evolved. We also talk about quantitative revolution in geography and postmodernism in geography. Now, what is postmodernism in geography? It talks about related to grand generalization of theories and principles. Now, unless until a geography as a discipline to be enriched, it has to have the theory and principles and models. And we are geography, geographers have worked upon that. We talked about heartland dripland theory in geopolitics. We talked about industrial revolution theory by Weber. We also talked about theory of uh, evolution, that is, demographic transition theory related to population. We also talked about theory of industrial location. So these are the theories which makes the geography enriched in different aspects of human geography. Now apart from it, my dear students, we need to understand that due to this geography research and evolution, the geography, there are many sub-disciplines which have emerged in human geography. Now we study geography in wider details such as we talk about political geography, we talk about medical geography, we talk about economic geography, we also talk about the things which are there, that is settlement geography. Now, urban settlement, rural settlements, all these are domain of geography. So, geography, when we talk about from the perspective of in totality, we must see in the perspective of holistic perspective. That is, we need to study each and everything in details and in a dynamic way because we cannot make our discipline or geography as a stagnant discipline. It keeps on changing. And from that perspective, we need to study geography from different perspectives like political, economic, medical, social geography and that's it. And today I am going to conclude my class. I hope you have been able to understand this concept as the concept says. Then we can re rehearse it or revise it and any queries you are most welcome to ask and jot it down. Thank you.